Hello, Liam. How are you? I'm great, thank you, Nizam. How are you? I'm fine too, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interview you. You're very welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. So, friends, we have Lian here, and let me brief you guys a little bit about her. Uh, Lian is a neurogenetics transformation mentor. Lian has been a transformation mentor since 2015 after having transformed her own life, going from suicidal and suffering from depression, anxiety, PTSD, and panic attack. Having lived a life of all forms of abuse since a childhood, she became her own rescue and ended up in Egypt, where she built her own inspirational education center, working with kids from the age of five to adults at the age of 65, teaching mindfulness through English conversation building, self-confidence and self-worth. And you know, she also helped women who were stuck in the war zones within their own home, suffering domestic violence. And later, she came to Australia uh, before COVID hit and she returned with nothing. Guys, please make a note of it. She returned to Australia with nothing, no money, uh, exchange rate was very low. She had no home, no car, no furniture, no job, nothing. After a few months, she met her mentor and learned how to become a super conscious creator. And she ended up manifesting a beautiful home on a lake. She won her own car with no payments underlined. She has her own furniture, successful abundant business, and she helps people in four quadrants of life with health and vitality, business and money, love and relationship, life purpose, and soul calling. And let us know more about Leon from her own words. So that was a wonderful knowing you, uh, Leon. So how did you get into law of attraction? Well, I wasn't actually consciously seeking the law of attraction or learning how to manifest. That was not in my vision whatsoever. When I went to this seminar, just a little backstory, okay, back yeah. to Egypt where I built my own inspirational um, education center and it was so successful I was booked out from 10 a.m to 10 p.m six days a week but my problem was it was only small and I couldn't take it to the next level I needed it to go I found that when it came time to that next step I felt like my feet were just stuck in cement mm -hmm. And all, even though I'd done all this work on myself previously, I kept coming up with, you're not good enough. You don't deserve to have that. So I was oscillating backwards and forwards, like I was standing on the ledge of a cliff, ready to fly, but I just couldn't take that leap. And so I actually wanted to know why we keep oscillating like that. What keeps pulling us back in that two-step dance of life that we all do? And so it was that when I come back to Australia, there was a seminar here on the Gold Coast. It was the last live one right before COVID locked us down. Um, I didn't really know what it was about. I just saw the advertisement. I knew it had something to do with the mind. So I thought, well, I didn't have any friends, so I might go, go there and just maybe meet some new friends and stuff because I don't know this area. So that's what I did. But within the first 20 minutes of this seminar, my mentor showed me exactly why we um, oscillate and do the two-step. My jaw just hit the floor because I wasn't expecting it. You know, it's all to do with structured tension, something that no other big coach, and I've worked with a lot of the big coaches also, Tony Robbins and 
Lisa Nichols was even my um, mentor for 11 months while I was in Egypt. And I never once heard her discuss any of this. And it was just like, wow. But it wasn't until he asked the room, there was like 100 people in the room. And he asked everyone, who's got a fear of um, public speaking? So I put my hand up because I was absolutely terrified of speaking in front of people. Like I could speak in front of my students. That was my territory. I was safe doing that. But to go out in front of like 100 people, I didn't know, not my territory. I, I would literally shake like this. Tears would start. My legs would be like all jelly. And I just couldn't do it. Well, he did this process. He chose two of us. It was me and another lady. And he did this process. And within 15 minutes, I'm up there speaking in front of 100 people. That's how fast this was. And not only that, and he didn't even know this at the time, that I, I actually had chronic hip pain at the time. Like I was medicated to the eyeballs just to go sit there. But during this process, it released something and I've never had that pain back again. Dead. Never again. I don't know what it was. He didn't focus on it. He didn't even know it was there. I didn't mention it. But when he removed whatever the resistance was to me um, speaking and taking that next step for myself in my business, because your hips actually represent moving forward and taking that next step. So there, there was this stuckness in my hip and it just disappeared. Wow. Amazing. So that's that sold me, and that that's how I got into this because he taught us that we are powerful creators. We create our own pain. We create all, all the things that happen in our life, the good and the bad. You know, it was just totally, totally amazing, and I, this I loved it, and I just had to learn it. And now this is what I do for a living. Wow. <laughs> Very happy that you found out such an amazing mentor. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for sharing the background behind it, how your journey, what was the breakthrough experience you have had to uh, which which took you into the further study which landed up yourself becoming a mentor to many. Yes. yes. And um Leon, um, you explored epigenetics also, like what is this epigenetics and what is its role in the law of attraction? So could you please yeah. tell a little bit more about it? Okay, well, I learned epigenetics um, before in EFT also. That's what I was doing before I did um, this now neurogenics processes that I do. And it's... If you want a good book to read, Dr. Bruce Lipton studies this and he does have a book out. I can't remember the name of it, but... Um, the Biology of Belief? Lipton, pardon? The, the Biology of the Belief? Yes, Biology of Belief, that's the one. So epigenetics is the study of your behavior and your environment and how that can cause changes and effects affect your genes. So when you're living in a toxic environment, it creates toxic thinking, which creates pain in your body. So therefore it's changing at a cellular level. This is why we are such powerful, we're born powerful creators. So, we're born from love to create with love, except we just numb, get it numbed down and bury it and don't even understand our own powers because our parents put all their stuff on us. 
And as we grow, we make up our own stories, which again creates all this manifesting of um, trauma and um, mental illness that we create within ourselves. All these belief systems that are not even ours, they're not even real, you know? S some may be real, but we also embellish them and make them bigger than they are. And then we just continue to grow. And as we grow, so from age zero, from birth to age five is when you have locked in your emotional set points. Mm -hmm. So who we are today is actually who we were back then on an emotional level. Sure. Yes, we still develop um, as we grow, but the main emotional set points that trigger our reactions in life go back to that age. And so that's how epigenetics plays a role in learning how to attract. It's all about your thinking and the way you are reacting in your environment. So if you want to change that, you have to change your environment and your thinking. You can't just change. Like everyone says, when I was in Egypt, you know, it's like, oh, I want to move to um, Australia or Canada or wherever. It's like, why? It's not going to change anything. Oh, but it's freedom. No, the freedom is inside of you. You just don't understand it. So, and I, I, I also learned that myself, you know. I, I ran away from a divorce when I went to Egypt, thinking that I'll, I would, um, you know, get away from all my problems. But I found I just took me with me. Yes. Yes. And even though I'd done all the work on myself, when you get triggered, it all comes back. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what country you live in, what zip code you live in, if you don't change your thinking. Lovely. That's and learn how point. to just, and the, it's more about learning how to just let go of the past. Remove all the resistance. You don't need to go into your stories because your stories just keep re-imprinting. And you just keep living um, all your old beliefs over and over again. So what I do is I teach you how to remove the resistance of the emotional set points. We let go of the emotions of it. And we don't need to go into the story. Because you're not broken and you don't need fixing. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Has a lot of questions. <laughs> and and uh, Lian, like, um, how does neuroscience, like, because you know, so many papers are published and so much of research is going on, but simplify, simplify, how does understanding neuroscience? help us understanding law of attraction. What does, what's, what's the role does it play in neuroscience? The thing is neuroscience and epigenetics go together hand in hand. Okay. Okay. okay? So they're much of the muchness except neuroscience examines the structure and function of the brain itself and your thought patterns and your nervous systems and how they all interact together. And it's now been scientifically proven. And Dr. Joe Dispenza yeah. really um, is a big one on outlining all of this, of how he had broken his own back in a, I think it was a bicycle accident. He was riding a bicycle. And he was supposed to have surgery, but refused. And he took himself out of the environment of the hospital and went home. And he just laid there. And he just focused on healing himself. And he did. He did. He, he, he healed his own broken back. When doctors told him he would never work, walk again, especially if he didn't have the operation. Well, he defied all the odds and he showed them that 
the power of the mind. But it's not something that you can just do one day and it'll just heal itself. You know, this is months and months of him lying there and doing vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae, just thinking it was um, healed. And it was, he could, he would visually see his future, see himself walking. He would do meditations. And this is how he healed himself through the power of neuroscience and epigenetics and understanding how powerful creators we are. Right. Thank you for that. Uh, You're welcome. I, I, I just love this guy, Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's amazing, doing fabulous job. So he, yes. he is. He is yes. absolutely amazing. Yeah. And then, like, you know, this is uh, when I was going through your profile, and, you know, uh, one point really attracted me, which is like most of the law of attraction. Teachers or many books talk about subconscious mind, subconscious mind, subconscious mind. And here you are like, um, what inspired you to explore more about superconscious mind? First of all, like there are multiple questions around it. Like what is superconscious mind? How is it different from subconscious mind? What interests it? So could you please tell more about it? Okay. Well, as I already explained to you the story of how I got into all of this, mm -hmm. so it, that just truly inspired me. When I felt it and experienced it for myself, you know, that was minutes, literally minutes changed things within me. I never thought that was possible. I did um, faster EFT before now called you tactics. Um, and it was very fast also. But the problem with that one was you're still going into your story. This one doesn't go into your story. It just asks you, what, what is your end result? I want to be a public speaker. So close your eyes. Imagine that you are being that. And when you do that, all this fear suddenly comes up. You may feel sick in your stomach. Mm. You may start crying. You know, you may start shaking. Your body has a physical um, reaction right in the moment. And so, which happened to me. I was there bawling my eyes out. Um, but I'm somebody that, that can share their vulnerability and not care about it because it's who I am. Amazing. For the superconscious, like I'd never heard of the superconscious before this. You know, we worked with the unconscious and the subconscious as well doing EFT. So this was kind of new to me. But it's just, what is the superconscious? It's hard to people understand the superconscious. The superconscious is everything that is and was before we were us. Mm -hmm. It is the energy field that is attached to every single living thing, be it plants, be it animals, whatever. How do birds know how to fly from one side of the world to the other? They don't hold a GPS in there. For yes. and say, oh, we've got to turn left here. You know, it's like, they, it, it's an inbuilt memory. How does... Um, a woman's egg and sperm know how to come together and create a baby, how to subdivide all the cells. It is memory. So the superconscious is all of that. It is the memory of all memories. You can call it your God within. You can call it whatever you want. But every single person, every living thing, all animals, all plants, fish, oceans, everything is from the superconscious. Some will say, oh, well, you're saying it's God. No, I'm not. I'm saying that whatever, whoever created um, all this energy field, then that's God. 
so he created this energy field that is just so simply amazing that he made us in this form of himself as powerful creators not in the physical in the likeness that we can create anything we desire you just have to let go of the resistance as to why you think you can't have it because anybody anybody can create anything that they desire they just have to believe it it's not see most most on me law of attraction things say if you believe it in your mind you can hold it in your hands well that's only a very small part and we don't work on that premise we work on the premise you have to be it before you see it which means you have to let go of all the attachments to everything so that you are it right now not wait until when and this is that'll come later i'll explain that one later <laughs> okay so uh thank you for that uh, how, it, it, it explains the difference between super conscious and subconscious yes. and uh, well, let me just before we go yes. on um yes. we do have three conscious uh three minds we have the yes. conscious mind the subconscious mind and the super conscious mind and they work with whatever we tell them all three are working together but when you connect into the field of the super conscious alone it can override the others mm. so that that's the difference between them all if you if you tell um send an instruction so your unconscious is what drives your bus on a daily basis it's every single memory since the day you were born or in the womb even till now so whatever you instruction you give it it's going to follow it um and this is why people don't usually succeed in life it's because their old their i current identity doesn't want them to change and you have to understand how your identity will always pull you back you even may get what you want but it won't let you have it for long so it's like you know you see all these millionaire rappers that come from the ghettos and they make their millions and next thing 2 3 to 5 years down the track they then broke again yes they've lost it all they're in more debt than when they before they started it's because their identity is living in lack and scarcity they come from that lack and scarcity identity so it's not going to let them keep it it will sabotage you okay thank you so well <coughs> yeah so leon please tell me more about the neurogenetics the term that you have coined please tell more about it okay neurogenetics i came up with this name just a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um and because i have really super big dreams my dreams are just not little i want to take this global mm -hmm. so i want to actually start schools and teach this so mindfulness schools ever since i was in egypt i had i had this dream it's written in my journal and it, i drew it because i woke up from this dream and it was just like this is what i have to build So my dreams are not small. So neurogenics came from the um combination of neuroscience, epigenetics and the hermetic principles. And I've just combined them all together um to create my own unique name from that. So what that 
I teach is values and focus, number one. Because if you don't understand your own values and how you live your life, how, how do you expect to create anything? How do you expect to manifest? Mm. If you don't even know yourself, how do you, you can't just say, hey, God, I want this and wait for him to land it in your lap like most people do. It doesn't work like that. So you have to understand your values and you have to create a clear vision that doesn't come from a problem-solving structure. See, most people have dreams and goals to try and get away from something, to try and solve a problem. You know, I want this business because I, I hate that job. <clears throat> See, that's a problem-solving structure right there. Life will be better when I get over there. No, it won't. So I teach about the six sabotaging identities. One, I'm not good enough. Two, I'm not worthy. Three, I'm not capable. Four, I'm insignificant. Five, I'm not um, perfect. And six, I don't belong. Okay. These six sabotaging identities is all that resistance that comes up when you try and go for what you want. They're the ones that kept me stuck on the edge of that cliff in Egypt and not allowing me to jump. Even though I had so many coaches working on exactly all of those. But you see, they were going at it from a problem um, fixing. They were trying to fix me. And this is what's wrong with the self-development world is they keep you stuck in a problem solving and identity fixing structure, which just keeps telling your um, unconscious mind that you're still not good enough just as you are. I need to fix myself before I can have this. Before I can go have a new relationship, I have to fix myself. Okay. No. Yeah, many, many uh, school of thoughts do that. First, I need to heal myself. Yes. And only I have to. So you don't. Uh, no, I don't teach that. With it. No. No, because <laughs> you, you're just still sending, okay, well, I mustn't be good enough just as I am right now so I can go have that. Mm -hmm. So you still, no matter how much fixing you do, you're still never going to be good enough. If we don't work on ourselves, Len, so don't we repeat the patterns? Again, it comes down to changing your mindset and mm -hmm. releasing what lets um, what holds you back. Okay. 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 You so speak resistance. Go, you don't go into the story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look, when I am teaching some somebody they all go into the story in their own head okay don't get me wrong they do they go into the story in their own head but i don't um hear it okay. okay i don't get them repeating it i just get their feelings i get these six sabotaging identities okay so you want this business over here why can't you have it oh well i feel i'm not good enough i feel i don't deserve to have that or even the um, imposter syndrome of, you know, who will I be if I become that? I'm, I can't have that because then I'll change and I don't know who to be. There's all these catches in it, you know? So we just keep removing that using the processes and rewiring, and this is where neuroscience comes into it, we rewire new Neural pathways. Okay. Lovely. So it's like when you have that aha moment, mm -hmm. when you're thinking something, you go, oh, ah. in that moment, you create a new neural pathway right there. So when we're doing this work, we are creating new neural pathways in your brain. 
that helps you to let it go. Will it come back? Yes, I'm not saying it doesn't come back because we have trillions of experiences in all different areas. Mm -hmm. And so our subconscious mind will always find another reason why you can't change. So it's just a matter of recoding your brain and rewiring your brain, you know, like we've had a lifetime of misinformation, false beliefs, made up stories. And it doesn't just take one day, one week, one month. We have to retrain our entire way we think. And it could take up to 12 months to even do that if you're dedicated if dedicated nothing changes without action consistent persistent <coughs> action you see people like oprah winfrey you know she came from a very poor background a lot of abuse, raped and molested during her childhood. But did she stop and say, oh, I need to fix myself before I can have that? She didn't. She just got clear in her mind that she didn't want that life anymore. She, she found that why, that why that just kept pushing her, you know, and that lifestyle back there was her why. She didn't want to go back there. She wasn't going to let anybody pull her back there. She didn't let her color, her, her size, anything get in her way. She just kept going for what she wanted. And this is how you manifest the right way. You don't give up. It doesn't take, it didn't take her, you know, one month to break through. It took her years. She had a lot of knockbacks. There's so many people that never even finished school, didn't get degrees, who are now famous and millionaires and billionaires. And, you know, they didn't stop and say, hey, I need to fix myself first. They just got clear, chose what they wanted, and just kept going for it. Every knockback, they just come back more. Every knockback, they come back more. They didn't allow defeat to be in their vision. They didn't, they accepted failure. They just took failure and said, okay, that way didn't work. What's the next way? And that's how you create. You got to have patience. You got to yes. have persistence. And you got to have purpose. Purpose. So you got to know what it is that you really want. You know, it's like, I'm not getting any younger. I'm single. I've got no husband to support me. I have to create this business and this dream and make it to where I want it with my schools in, in, on a global scale. That is, that is my dream, and I'm not going to stop. Have I been knocked down? Hell yes. Many, many, many times. But do I stay there? No. Do I beat myself up for being negative? No. You see, most this is another thing with, with um, the self-development world. Oh, you can't be negative. You only must be positive. Don't think negative. Don't think negative you're denying your natural polarities within your own being, within your own soul. Don't hang around negative people. I just can't get that. Okay, yes, you need to be around like-minded people, but you don't need to totally push everybody out of your life to get what you want. Because none of them 
are going to have the mindset that you've got. So you just have to move away from it for a little bit until you can get your focus and your clarity. But they're teaching you also. Yes. They're constantly teaching you of what you don't want, who you don't want to be, and no. what you don't want to do. <laughs> if you deny that, how are you going to learn? Amazing, amazing. You know, if you've got, if you're just surrounded by people who are already up there, what are they teaching you about yourself? Yes. Nothing. You're just trying to copy them and be like them. You're not learning to be your authentic self. So that that's another thing in the personal development world that, that's just not congruent with um, growth. Okay, so Leanne, you have developed a program called Financial Freedom Bootcamp. Yes, um, my bootcamp is for groups. Um, this is this is my uh, twelve week. It covers twelve lessons that teach you how to gain clarity, focus, and structure within your life. Mm -hmm. um, I cover the four areas of health and wellness, love and relationships, businesses and finances, and soul calling and life purpose. And we get you to choose one each month. Which one are you going to focus on? Because the truth is your identity controls you in every area of your life, whether it's your business whether it's make, making money, whether it's in a relationship, it's all about you. So you have to understand that, number one, your health is your wealth. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have any of that without your health. You can have it, but it's not going to be good. Yes. You know? We're going to be ill. We're not going to have energy. We're not going to be able to chase after our grandkids or our kids or whatever. So you need to change how you look at your health, number one. And then we can move into your business. And relationships, whether it's a love relationship, whether it's relationship with money, whether it's relationship with friends, whether it's relationship with co colleagues, again, it's all about you, not them. Anything that you do, say, react is about you. You can't control anybody else. The only things that you can control is what you think, what you say, and how you react. I used to teach my students, even my real little ones, like anything outside of you, forget it, let it go. The only thing you can control is what's inside of you. Inside, inside, inside. Every single thing that you need is inside of you. We are born with every single thing that we need in life. We just, we're born to parents who have so many problems already and they just dump them all on us from the day we're born and we forget our natural abilities to love even. So we forget how to love without needing anything back in return love becomes a manip becomes a manipulating machine that we all are taught we're all narcissists to some extent we're all fighting to survive we're all trying to just be somebody we're not 
We're all trying to please everybody else around us. And it's all for what? So they can give us love. Mm. My life will be better when? When I get a husband, when I get a baby, when I get married, when, when I get a new job, when, when I get money. We're always looking for everything outside of us. Abundance is in here. Yeah. Abundance of love, the abundance of freedom, the abundance of acceptance, the abundance of gratitude in everything. And then we're surrounded by it. We are surrounded by abundance, but yet we still want more. We're never happy with what we've got. Oh, I've got a new phone. Oh, I've got a better one. Oh, I want that one. Yes. This is, this is the way of the world now. It's become a more society in a really bad way. The more you get, the more you want. The more you want, the more you get. And it's never ending. We're always trying to get better than our next door neighbors or our family. Well, they can't be better than me. We, this thing here gives us so much abundance. You know, when I grew up, I didn't have this. You know, I didn't have the internet. I didn't have all the things the kids have these days. We are so surrounded by abundance now. Mm. You know, running water. A hundred years ago, they didn't even have that. No. Not clean running water the way we have it these days. Maybe over in India, it's still iffy. But, you know, it's, there's still water. Not everywhere has that luxury, like a lot of African places don't have the luxury of that. But we take it all for granted in the West, that's for sure. We take everything. And I, I learned how to be so grateful when I lived in Egypt because it was just so out of my comfort zone and what I knew. So I, I learned to be grateful for everything. Hey, so Leon, here's my next question about uh, what do you think is the missing secret in the movie The Secret? There's actually many missing things. Yeah, you know, it's it's clarity on the end result. Mm -hmm. Learning and knowing the difference between your current reality and your future reality, mm -hmm. that neither of them matter. Your now is all there is. You have to be grateful for everything now, not when I get over there. Because if you're trying to manifest from, God, my life sucks. It'll be better when I get over there, when I get that job, when I get that wife or husband or baby or a new car or whatever it is what's going to happen it's going to collapse your identity is going to pull you back again and nothing's going to change that's why you just keep creating more of what you don't want and when you say i don't want that universe doesn't know i don't it just hears i want so it just keeps giving you more of what you're doing more of what you don't want. And that's why we keep staying stuck in this goddamn cycle of abuse. Mm. Abuse to ourselves, to others, to everybody, to life itself. The next one is uh, not being able to remove the resistance. Nobody teaches you this. Nobody teaches you how to remove the resistance as it comes up. And nobody teaches you your pattern of how you create failure in your life. Mm. 
So I teach you all of this that nobody else is teaching out there in the in those kind of world. It's I hear so many people, I'm in so many law of attraction groups, and it's just mind-boggling what people say and what people think and do. And it's like, oh, this stuff doesn't work. It's like, well, no, of course it's not. Look at your attitude. Look at the way you think. Like Jim Carrey said once on, on Oprah, it's like he he um, wrote a check for himself, a $10 million check, and he put it in his wallet. And when he first started, that's what he wanted. He wanted to make $10 million. And he said he, he kept it in his wallet for five years. And then when he made Dumb and Dumber, what, did, what was his first big check? $10 million. So he said, you can't just think something and then go and sit down and eat a sandwich. Where's my sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> and just wait for us like come on god i ordered that weeks ago where is it i don't have time come on get it <laughs> yeah the, the, this is people they they are so impatient they want everything now it doesn't work like that you have to start see everybody this is also why goal setting doesn't work i teach goal setting but it's a different way i i do one year, 90 days, 30 days, weekly and daily. But we break it all down into little micro steps, micro wins. So you're not looking at that big picture at the end. It's just each day. What do I need to do today to get me closer to that? And you do it and you take action. If you don't take action, why don't you take action? It's like, well, I just don't feel like I'm good enough. So I remove that resistance and they take the next step. And I keep them going and removing all that resistance as they keep taking the steps. So it's all about focus. Focus equals results. Beautiful. And Lian. What are the common mistakes people do while practicing law of attraction? Uh, as I just said, they stay stuck in this problem solving structure. Mm. See, I, I teach you all about structured alignment and how to create from your true choices. See, I, I forgot to mention that we, we actually create and choose from eight ineffective ways that we choose. It's not just a right or wrong. There's eight ways. And that's that's also plays a huge part in how you get your true choice of what it is that you want. So like, you know, say teenagers, for instance, when they're going to university or whatever, is it them choosing the university or is it the parents choosing the university? Okay. It's the parents. So that's not your true choice. That's why a lot of people drop out because they hate it. Their parents force them into doing things they don't want to do. Force them into... Um, family businesses hmm. i've seen a lot of stuff i don't yeah. want to do it but i did it i yeah. didn't want to get married to this person but because of that yes. yeah. forced into marriages you don't want to be in <laughs> yeah there's so many different I'll, I'll read them all out to you so number one is choice by limitation mm -hmm. choosing only what seems possible or reasonable Choice by indirectness, choosing the process instead of the result. Choice by, sorry, yeah, choice by indirectness, that one was. Choice by elimination, eliminating all other possibilities. That's when we do paper, rock, scissors. And then 
choice by default. The choice not to make a choice, so whatever results happen. That's when we get asked, what do you want? It's like, oh, I don't care, whatever. Then we have conditional choices. Choices designed, I'll only do this if you do that. It's a manip manipulative way to choose. Choice by reaction, we all are guilty of this one. Choice to, designed to overcome a conflict. Okay, you win. I'm not going to fight you. And then choice by adverse possession, which, which is like, I'm not going to make a choice until all the stars are in alignment. I love that. Like hazy <laughs> metaphysical <laughs> choices. So, you know, that's, that's how we um, create choices in our life. They're not true choices. And that's why manifesting doesn't work. Okay. So the other one is people are just not grateful. Hmm. They're not grateful for the abundance that they already have. Okay, I, I, I join gratitude groups and all as I see is, oh, I'm grateful for opening my eyes this morning. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful. They think just saying it is enough. You. you know, you got to actually feel it from the heart. And you got to say, I am grateful for opening my eyes this morning because so many other people never had that choice today. Okay. You got to know why you're grateful for. Because it just adds a total different meaning to the gratitude. It's choices. It's just amazing the difference it makes when you are writing your gratitude. You can write it, you can say it, you can even just think it, but you have to practice it every single day. Beautiful. And the other one is, is your mindset. And we're all guilty of being pulled back because our identity doesn't want us to have that over there. It wants to keep us safe. See, everybody thinks fear is your enemy. Mm -hmm. Fear is just your friend. Fear is just another emotion. It's fear emotion. just wants to keep you safe. What fear is telling you, it's like, are you prepared enough? You got an exam tomorrow. Are you prepared enough? You get all this fear, all this anxiety, and it's like, did I study enough? Did I do I understand everything I need to know? That's what fear is. It's nothing to be afraid of. Unless someone's coming at you with a knife or a gun or something to do something physical to you, then that's fear and you should run. Yes. You know, but the fear in our heads is, is, is just there trying to protect us, to ensure that we are ready for whatever's coming. Did we make the right choice? You know, that, that's all it is. So, yeah, and the other thing is people give up way too easy. That is one more thing. You know, oh, it hasn't happened. This doesn't work. So let me know. <laughs> Safest way. It, it, yeah, it's just, it just oh, I give up. I'm tired of this. Like you see those um, memes or whatever on, on the internet and the guys digging, digging a tunnel, digging a yes, tunnel, yes, digging yes. A tunnel <laughs> and there's gold at the other end and one's only like a millimeter away and he gives up and he walks away and he's just that millimeter away from succeeding and the other one's further back but he's still going he's not giving up and that, that's how life is you can you can get knocked down you can allow yourself to feel any of that negativity any of that sadness grief loss whatever depression just allow it allow yourself to feel it because when you deny your feelings 
you are denying your truth. And this is why so many people have depression these days, because they keep stuffing their emotions and stuffing their emotions. Instead of facing the truth of who they really are. So when you really let go of all that bullshit that you're telling yourself, mm -hmm. it creates so much freedom. So when I was in Egypt, you see, I realized I was resisting everything. I wanted to control everything that happened in my life. And I realized I actually did some shadow work on myself and faced the devil and just really just unloaded all my own ugliness. And when I did that, I looked at who I was being as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter, as a sister. Was I proud of any of that? There's a lot of things I wasn't proud of. And when you let go of all that lies, because we put on this mask when we walk outside the door, oh, look at me, I'm this really good, kind person. Do you go back inside and you're attacking your family? Yeah, no, you're not. You're just lying to yourself. So when you're lying to yourself, what you're actually doing, I, this is my opinion, is that you're stabbing your soul in the back. So that's where depression comes from. You're constantly, every lie to yourself, whenever you say, I'm okay, when you're not, that's a lie, stab. Whenever you say yes to somebody to do something that inside you don't want to do it, it's another stab. And it just keeps building and building until you get all this resentment and all this anger just starts bubbling up because you've stuffed it all down. It's got nowhere to go but out now. And then, then the depression just sets in. You can't, you can't do that. So resistance to everything outside of you is a lock. The key to that lock is acceptance. Acceptance of everything that you cannot control that is outside of you. A big problem comes, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You need to sit back and just say, what do I need to do to not make that bigger than it is? What do I need to do to take that next step to solving it? Okay, it's there. All the, uh, Trying to scream and rant and rave and think the world's against you because there's a problem that's you know, like a big boulder coming your way, you find a way around it. There's always a way around it. Water takes the path of least resistance. Even if it takes months to break it, it's going to push through it and form its own um, banks and just go around it. You can't control what's outside of you. So let go of everything that you're trying to control, including family, friends, whatever. They're not doing what you want them to do. Too bad. It's not your life. You live your life. And if they don't like it, that's too bad. You do what you have to do for you to be authentically you, uniquely you. Don't try and be like Oprah or The Rock or some big movie star. No, be you. Nobody can walk your walk. Nobody can talk your talk. Nobody can shine with your smile. You just got to be you. When you can be, just be you, does it mean that 
Problems aren't going to come, no. Does it mean you're not going to get ill, no? Does it mean that you can't have what you want? Hell no. It just means notice it, allow it, feel it, let it go. Just don't unpack and live in it like we all tend to do. I allow myself. I, I had bad weeks. Yeah. Happens. I allow myself to cry for one day. I'll just fall on the floor and I'll cry like a little baby and I'll just allow all my bullshit to just say, come out. At the end of the day, I just say, you done now? Yeah. You done chucking your little tantrum, chucking your dummy out the cot? It's like, now what? What's your next step? You can create anything when you just let go of all that stuff and don't hold it in. Beautiful. Beautiful. That is what we call it as emotional intelligence. Let us become emotional aware. Intelligence. Mindful. Thank Mindfulness. You. That was beautiful. That's how you create. Yes. That was a beautiful conversation with Julian that brings uh, uh, the end of our interview. And before I close, just one quick uh, question. Could you please share some of your favorite books that you read? Well, Dr. Bruce Lipton, The Biology of Belief, is a really good one to understand epigenetics. Um, Do you mind if I just quickly go and grab some? Yes, sure. I'm really bad with remembering names of no. books. Hey. Yes, Leah. Okay, so the number one book you want to really learn about structure and the os os stopping oscillating is Robert Fritz. By Robert Fritz. The Path of Least Resistance. The Path of Least Resistance. A lot of our work is done through this book. It, it, it really is amazing. And then it works along the lines with um, the principles of William White Cloud. And another good book by him is The Magician's Way. He has a lot of other different books, but that's the only one I've got at the moment, The Magician's Way. And it teaches you about how to change your focus on something. It's actually really very good also. But there's a lot of different books that you could read. I got, I got this book called The One Thing. The one, one thing you'll <laughs> learn to cut through the clutter, achieve better results in less time, build momentum. I actually quite enjoyed this book. Mm. It was, I've got a lot of um, purpose, priority, and productivity. So th th this talks about um, trying to create business and stuff. I loved it. Thinking big is essential to extraordinary results. The only actions that become springboards to succeeding big are those informed by big thinking to begin with. Make this connection and the importance of how big you think begins to sink in. When you allow yourself to accept that big is about who you can become, you look at it differently. Yeah. So don't think small. Stop thinking small. Everybody, even those who start a business, oh, I'll just, just start with this, this, this little business over here. I might just start a laundromat or, or something small over here because I don't want to get too big because, oh, that's too much for me. No, think freaking big. Think big. It's like I said, my dreams are not small. They're huge. Yes. Do they scare me? Yes. Do I know how I'm going to achieve it? No. no. You see the how, I get asked this all the time, but how? But how am I going to achieve it? I've got no money. 
I don't know how. But how, but how, but how? I read it, read a small blog on my page the other day about this. It's like the how is of no concern to you. The how belongs to God. You move every day you create and you remove all that resistance. And every day you're just taking that next step and that next step and suddenly God's put it there before you. You're not looking at the how. The how just manifests all by itself. That's why we don't even look at the big picture because by the time you get to six months through whatever it's, that picture has changed. It's gotten bigger. You've finally got all this confidence and you believe in yourself and you start expanding and it's going to change. It's why you don't focus on the end result. It's just there. I do love um, all of oh, Rhonda Burns the, books. I've got the whole the series. Yeah. The Power and the Magic. Love it. Love, love, love. Yeah. So, and there's the biology of belief. Biology of belief. And then I also, the seven habits of, of highly effective people. You know, I've got Tony Robbins over there also, which I forgot to get, but just read anything and everything that you can. Keep reading. And just keep reading and keep doing and keep being. Every day when you start changing the way you think, your being changes. changes. Every day it's like I, I ask people, it's like, who are you being today? Take check of yourself. Are you being kind? Are you being loving? Are you being generous? Are you being grateful? Who are you being? And each and every day you have to choose it. This is the big thing with the eight ineffective choices. Every day you wake up and say, I choose to be a successful, powerful business owner. I choose to be an amazing, loving wife. Mm. I choose it. Not I am. Uh, okay. This is another mistake. <laughs> because your I am is not real right now in your now. Your unconscious has trillions of reasons to prove that you're not that. And it's going to throw it at you like a grenade. So when everyone's saying, oh, just keep repeating, I am, I am, I am. It's like, how many years have you got? You, you can just say that, but it's going to take you years. But if you say, I choose, your unconscious mind cannot argue with it. Because it's a choice. I choose to be. Not I am. And when you remove all that resistance, then you become it. So then you can say I am. But just constantly repeating affirmations of I am over and over and over again, it, 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 it's draining and it's disappointing. And there's just so many different things that, you know, it, it's just not going to let you be it. Because, yeah, it proves it. You don't come up and say, see, I told you so, you're not that. So write it. I've got it all. It's like I have what I deserve. I deserve. And I just... I deserve to be loved by myself than others. I deserve respect and I must respect my own boundaries. The next one is I thank and love my body and I thank and love every part of my body. 
even the bits I don't like. I thank them because they, they've got me to where I am today. My body keeps me alive. I can change my body. Okay, I can't change the skin. These days you can go get your nose fixed. You can go get your eyebrows done, your cheeks done, your butt cheeks done, your breasts done. You can change any part of your body that you don't like. But thank it. Our bodies are walking miracles. And the next one, I have a list of I choose. I choose to be a strong woman. I choose to face my fears and be courageous. I choose to be lovable and I am worth loving. Choose it. I choose everything every day. Every day is Tuesday. So you have a choice. And this, is, this is how you change that thinking. Wonderful. Because like you guided meditations to get <laughs> you there, and you feel it in your body, and then you set the intention every single day and you choose it. Beautiful. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Leon, for your wonderful time. And especially what I loved is your passion and your patience to explain and share. It was wonderful takeaway, and I'm sure audience are also going to get a lot of takeaways. So, friend, I'm gonna uh, provide all the contact details of Lee and as well. So, whoever wants to reach out for personal help, for mentoring, Lee is there. So, thank you very much, once Absolutely, again. you can find me on um, Facebook, just under Lee Rodway. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn, the same, Leanne Rodway, um, Instagram, uh, that might be epigenetics, transformations, um, just look up Leanne Rodway, you'll find me, you can send me a message anywhere, I'm sure I'll get it. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you, once again. For yeah. your time, and I'm sorry if I've taken this over time. No, it's fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you once again. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you.